Well, um, what a day we're having. Um, I hope you're <laughs> as excited about this as I am. And we're going to continue that excitement now with our third speaker and a, a great friend of Inmar and a guy, again, I've got to know quite well over the past few years, Mark Zohar. Uh, we're going to learn about how publishers can leverage the power of community engagement and digital experiences to optimize ad performance. So, of course, advertising remains, of course, a major revenue stream and commercial model for most publishers. But maximizing the ad revenue while improving the overall user experience is both a challenge and an opportunity for digital publishers. And VIA4 President and CEO Mark Zohar will now explore how publishers can leverage the power of community engagement and digital experiences to increase metrics such as time on site, page view, blah, 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 blah. You'll hear all about this and to generate unique first party data to better inform campaigns, which is really key. Mark, uh, well, you're, you're in Canada, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Well, it's great to see you again, my friend. How are you? Yeah, well, how are you? Yeah, you're great. It's great. And I, I, I always love every time we, we have a, a session together because it's uh, I always learn something. So I'm looking forward to it today. The floor is yours. Perfect. Great. Well, listen, uh, those first three sessions, uh, hearing from, from Daniel and Tony, what's clear, and also your, your preview, Mark, I think, if anything, it demonstrates that when it comes to advertising in the publishing industry, frankly, a lot of other things, there are so many strategic and tactical initiatives that need to be considered, many of them in parallel, right? We talked about things like, you know, um, contextual advertising, uh, value exchange, direct audiences, first party data. Um, and what I want to talk to you about today in just very quick 10 minutes that I'm going to get through, hopefully, is another strategy and approach that we've seen uh, to be extremely successful and effective in addressing some of the advertising challenges that are faced with the deprecation of a third party cookie and, you know, the goal of maximizing revenue from, from your audiences. I'm going to talk about uh, a strategy around community or audience engagement and how engaged audiences, and I think uh, Tony spoke to it a little bit, how engaged audiences can help kind of lift all boats and what strategies publishers can take to engage their audiences more deeply, to not only drive more revenue through advertising, but to drive a lot of other strategic goals around logged in users, registrations, and ultimately subscriptions. So with that, um, just a quick thing about Viafora, I won't spend too much time, but really our goal is to help publishers activate their audiences. And by activation, we mean taking an audience from a passive to an engaged and active state, taking your audiences from an unknown non-logged in state to a registered and logged in state. And finally, taking audiences from um, a low value, um, you know, high bounce rate model to a high value brand loyal audience. Those are the things we, we focus on. A lot of our publishers are seeing, you know, great results on the ad side, which we'll talk about, because the longer your audience stays on your site, the deeper they engage with their brand, the deeper they're, con they, they're retained through community, the more ads in view and the more targeted they can be. So just looking at the notion of, of a journey, and there have been various versions of this on the slides uh, up until now, the way we, we talk to our customers about it and think about it is going from that unknown anonymous audience, which is the vast majority of everyone's audience today, and moving them through a journey that increasingly engages them, gets to them to a point of registration and, um, and deep understanding of their interests and preferences. So one of the things we believe, especially I think the deprecation of a third party cookie is really highlighting is the need to move to a registered logged in state to get that PII, to get that email address is really critical. Historically, I think, or even recently, publishers really have had two strategies for that. One of them is a paywall, whether it's a hard paywall or a metered paywall, and the other is largely a newsletter signup. And those things are, are fairly effective. The conversion rates on subscriptions just aren't there in terms of scale yet. And what we've seen was newsletters, while they are effective, um, it may not be the highest quality audience that you can retain over time. And so what we believe is going from zero to one, from non-registered to registered, um, can be optimized by creating an interval stage, which we call an engaged state. And engagement means getting your users to spend more time on your site through value exchange moments. And those value exchange moments could be around having them leave their opinion, feedback, or comments on the content you're creating. You know, we believe in 2022, 
audiences who are living off site on social um, expect certain things on, on owned and operated properties. And the notion of just passive content consumption, we don't believe is sustainable going forward. Audiences want to participate. The more you participate and engage your audience, the more you know about them. So that could be things like live Q and A's or asking anything's on owned and operated. Why should it only be on Reddit when you can have your audience direct, learn more about them, drive registrations. Um, the ability to follow your authors and create a following on the site and get updates and a range of personalization features. And what we've seen is by creating that engaged state through different measures and products and, and experiences, we can significantly increase that registration rate. And in fact, for the vast majority of our publisher customers around the world, um, that engagement that we're helping to, to drive is the largest contributor of new user registrations. Now, once you get to a registered state and get that kind of PII, that email address, uh, that's not enough. You, you then really need to get to know your audience really well, deeply their interests, not only what they're reading, what they're saying, their tone, their sentiment, their pre preferences or propensities, and, and their user profiles, which I'll talk about in a second. And that can be done in a number of ways. Contextual is part of it. Uh, we use uh, a range of machine learning and NLP technologies to really drive and create identity graphs on site and social graphs on site, um, and again, propensities. And what we see from that is that, again, that creates that higher propensity then to move to the next state, which is either a subscri subscribe state, if there is a subscription model, or a highly retained state. Now, all along that path, as I'll show in a second, the value to the publisher in terms of ads and monetization increases. So I'll walk quickly through another version of a funnel. Um, and this has taken uh, kind of industry data across our 800 plus now uh, brands that we work with globally. And what you'll see here are monthly figures. So again, your anonymous audience, what we see is the page views per user that they consume and the time on site is very minimal. In fact, at two minutes time on site on average per month, it doesn't even create a lot of opportunities for contextual advertising. So again, that audience segment is, provides very little value to you. They have a high bounce rate. They may be coming in from social referrals or even search, but you know, they're not spending a lot of time on your site. And their ads in view, and I'll caveat this, we're, we're looking at a specific ad unit that we identified, uh, actually a lower viewability ad just to show what the impact is. Is, is again, very low. So direct monetization is very low for this audience segment. Now, looking at that active engaged segment, which I talked about, we can see the second that these, these audiences, and by the way, they're still anonymous users at this stage. Um, the second they start to engage with more, more options on site, uh, personalization and so on, their value in terms of content consumption and time on site increases markedly, you know, four to five X. Um, as does their ads in view. So by just providing them opportunities to engage deeply or more deeply, we're driving them to more value for the publisher, get to know them more. And they have a much higher propensity to register. So that active engaged user segment, which in, the, in of itself can be uh, delivered as an audience segment for targeting, um, has about a 15X propensity, higher propensity to register than an anonymous segment. So again, that interval step is really important to, to optimize that funnel. And again, their ads in view are significantly higher. And finally, we get to a segment we call UGC contributor. So these are folks who you know, may leave uh, their opinion, feedback, take a poll, uh, like content, uh, participate in a live Q&A. These are your you know, exponentially uh, uh, valuable users, brand loyal, high retention, high consumption, and extremely high monetization. One of the things that we're doing is allowing um, our publisher customers to target all of these segments, but particularly the uh, UGC contributor and the, um, the registered users through high impact contextual, highly contextual advertising in engaged experiences like conversations, live Q and A's, live chats and so on. And what we see there is ad performance is outsized both in terms of yield and CTRs. And you can see at the bottom there, in terms of that UGC contributor, they really are your power base, uh, driving almost a hundred times the number of ad impressions and monetization. Um, 
we then talk about the notion of, of really getting to know your audience. Uh, one of the things that we've developed over the last you know, eight to 12 months are these um, first party user profiles. So looking at both on page or page generated content, as well as user generated content, we're able to uh, generate real time uh, insights into users' journeys and their interests. So what you see here is, this is from one of our UK customers, we can see this particular user is interested in, you know, Prince of Wales, uh, Prince Philip. We can see their, their, their scores and the amount of page views consumed. We also have an engagement score underneath that that we're not showing here. So again, we get to know them a little bit. We can also see what categories. So these could be aligned to IAB categories. So family and parenting, law and government, you know, art and entertainment. Again, with a scoring system and how many times if in this particular case commented on that. So declarative data around IAB level categories. Um, and then sentiments. So we can actually look at their sentiment around things. So uh, interestingly around this particular user um, doesn't have a, has a negative sentiment around the order of succession and the heir apparent, probably not a fan of Charles. Um, so in this particular example, we can start to really understand who this user is. Using all this data, which we now deliver to our customers in real time for integration into their DMPs, uh, directly into GAN for audience segmentation or into their customer data platforms. Um, again, provides a very deep understanding of not only contextual, but declarative first party data. What we're not showing here are a whole bunch of other segments and, and insights in terms of entities, what brands they follow, what their purchase intent is based on um, uh, purchase signals and so on. So with all that, you know, we believe that there are a lot of things that need to be done. Some of them are tactical, some of them are strategic, but stepping back, we really believe in this notion of a holistic monetization strategy, what I call contextual plus. Contextual is great, it's scalable, it works. Um, the challenge with contextual a little bit is it's actually a weak signal. It's a fairly weak signal based on passive consumption and there could be a lot of false positives in there. And so we believe that um, augmenting contextual with you know, zero party declarative, higher intent, higher fidelity data provides publishers with really a 360 view of their users. We believe that publishers really need to focus on a registration and conversion strategy. How do we move users from that unknown to that logged in state, again, through value exchanges, uh, around audience engagement strategies, those value exchange moments driving logged in sessions, declarative data, which is incredibly important, especially for premium marketers and advertisers to understand user intents and create custom audiences in real time around that. We talked a little bit about our real-time user profile. We can now deliver them as key values for as, as first-party audience segments. And we do this automatically uh, for all of our customers. So if they have a data science team, that's great. If they don't, we can kind of be their data science uh, audience um, insights uh, solution out of the box. Um, Again, that enriched user data, declarative, uh, passive, contextual, um, uh, what they're following on site provides. And we've actually, if we step back, publishers are, have a, a real opportunity in this third party cookie deprecation uh, era. On the one hand, it definitely is a challenge. On the other hand, publishers have the audiences. The audiences have the, the preferences and the, and the behaviors and the insights and the brand affinities that marketers want to reach. If publishers can uncover that at, at scale and in a way that can connect those audiences to marketers, that leverage has changed from programmatic where you're just filling in you know, ad slots with third-party programmatic to a premium audience based on interests and preferences. And if you do this right, you can actually improve the user experience. We've all been on these sites where they're you know, the ad density is high, we have self-playing videos, it, it really becomes a very negative user experience. If you can increase your yield and your CPMs through better and direct audience insights, you can lower your ad density, create a better user experience for, for your audiences and, you know, still come out ahead when it comes to monetization. And, and lastly, um, you know, again, I think Audience engagement, community engagement isn't the silver bullet. There are lots of other things that need to be done, but we think it is actually a critical uh, component that can help with contextual advertising. Keeps, keeps your users longer on the page, 
generates more page views, more contextual data. You can create custom audiences based on their specific direct interests, what they're following, polls they take. Um, it creates authenticated audiences because it drives significantly higher registrations uh, and logged in users and is a great way to also drive PMP deals. So just to summarize, I know we're a little bit behind, so I want to kind of make it quick. Um, we believe that audience engagement, community engagement, really leveraging your audiences as the value that they are and surfacing that in, in various ways is one of the strategies that can help you address the monetization challenges or gaps that programmatic and third-party um, may, that third-party cookie deprecation may challenge you with. And at the end of the day, it's your audience. That is your value. How do you mind that value? Well, you want to give them value. You want to keep them on site. You want to get to know them more. And those are some of the things that um, we're doing in market today. Mark, thank you so much. That's it's a lovely dovetail into what we've heard earlier today as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, I do believe you're doing God's work there. I mean, we've said this before to you earlier, well, I do believe that because I'm always impressed by what you have to say. Um, we don't really have time to go too much question, but I will ask you one very obvious question, and that is, you know, if there's somebody watching this today, one of the uh, delegates on the on this call wants to get in touch with you, what should they expect from you in terms of first steps if they want to start working with, with you and, 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 you know, go down the whole route of building strategy and optimizing the journey with you? You know, the first step that we always take is to understand the publisher's goals and initiatives. What are the key initiatives you're working on? Do you have a subscription, subscription strategy? What are your KPIs? And ultimately, we focus on your audience and really helping you to kind of think about your audience in a way that is, they're just not passive consumers of your content, but they right. can be active contributors of insights, conversion, and um, you know, really creating that community on site. At the end of the day, you know, and no offense to any publisher here, uh, content is largely a commodity. If I want to read about Elon Musk buying Twitter or what's happening in the Ukraine, and I hit a paywall, yes, I might choose that if I have a lot of brand affinity, but I can also find it on Google and Yahoo News. Community is unique and differentiated value. People will come back to connect with your um, with community. So those are some of the things that we, we talk about with publishers. And yeah, I'm happy to take questions offline as well. Okay, perfect, thank you. Well, everyone will get the presentation and they'll get your contact details on there, Mark, so they can get in touch at any time they wish. And, and anyone who's, who's, who's listening in here and is interested, do, if you haven't seen it already, go on to chat. And Tom, my colleague in Belgium, has already put a, a link up which is called First Party Data Insights for Media Companies. And there's a link to via for a site. We can download a white paper, which is all about what Mark's been talking about. Mark, thank you so much. We'll see you again soon, hopefully. Yes, thank you, Mark.